Hello everybody. The purpose of this video is to go over our syllabus for Health 430. This may not be your exact syllabus, but I'm going over the key points of the syllabus and telling you what you should make sure that you review. So at the top is the normal information. I'm on campus available to you 11 a.m. to noon on Tuesdays. I usually am there by 1030. Um, 5 to 6 p.m. on Mondays, I block out for link uh, for virtual meetings on WebEx. But if you've had me before, you ask other students who have had me, they will all tell you, I'm very much available to you as you need me. Um, so don't be afraid to request a time other than those two. Textbooks, <clears throat> our YouTube channel, the Facebook page for this course. This section for NCHEC standards, um, these are standards to help prepare for the CHES exam. So this course is really designed to help people prepare for that. And so it shows you of, of, of all the eight areas what we actually cover in this class to help you prepare. So as you look over that, you'll see that there's a lot of information that we go over that will help you in your exam. Um, I highly encourage people to get CHES certified as a certified health education specialist. There's lots of reasons that to do that and there's some new really important facts about it. And if you want to talk about it in class, just ask me and I'll go over the reasons. Um, and there's some really new reasons that are very important. This is very long. But on page 8 are the actual objectives for the class. Again, you can go over those and it tells you how they relate to the NCHEC exam. Policies, I'm going to go over some policies pretty quickly, but you need to look at them and really understand them. So the health fair event, <clears throat> every semester there is an event of some sort. We'll talk about it during class, but you are required to attend the event. Um, so whatever the event day and time is, you're required to be there. If you are not there or you submit a substantial amount, which is described in the syllabus, you then you cannot pass the class and well there there are some discussions in here and what some options are if you miss the health event it doesn't matter if it is an excused reason or an unexcused reason if you miss the event you cannot pass this class without um, doing something else that's described here attendance participation and conduct this class is run like a job um, so all my rules in this category are related to that. Um, attendance, if you're synchronous online and you were at work, they would expect you to have your camera on, and so do I. Um, if you don't want your camera on for some reason, you can email me that day what's going on, so I know. However, I cannot mark you fully present if I cannot see you, because I don't know you're really there. And there's some other explanations. Um, your you're expected to have access to some type of device during class because you're going to need it. Most of the time we meet, we're going to be using the internet of, for some one reason or another. Um, attendance, I give you, I run it just like a job. Just like a job, you have personal business days that you can take off. You don't need to tell anybody why. You have two of those in this class. You can miss two classes with, with I don't care what the reason is. I really don't. You can stay home because you just feel like staying home to watch a TV show. I'm okay with that. You have two personal business days, but after that, you're penalized. Just like a real job, if you miss work and you don't have leave, they take your pay. And so if you miss class and you're out of your two personal business days, then you start to lose points. It only imp Attendance only impacts your grade if it is a pattern. Um, if you miss once or you're late once or twice, that does not impact your grade. This is, this is set up for people who have a pattern of behavior. Um, again, this is in here. Your meetings that you will have with your teams follow the same attendance policies as the class. Um, all of this about leaving early absence, there's just details. The details are there because of issues that have happened in the past, so it's very much, it's very specific. It explains excused absences. Your attendance will be recorded in Blackboard, and you have one week from the day I post it to challenge it. If you, it goes beyond a week, I won't even consider a challenge on attendance because it's too hard to keep track of after one week. 
participation again consider we're running this like a job so you need to have conduct that is appropriate for a work setting electronic devices they can be your phones can be on vibrate you need a device every class, but you only are going to be using your device for classwork, not for personal stuff like emails. And it explains what happens if you do that. Academic integrity is a huge deal. <clears throat> In the syllabus, there's a list of examples, and there's also a link. At the time of making this video, the link works. If it doesn't work for you, just let me know, and I'll redo it. One of the things that's been added is the concept of artificial intelligence. Um, if you present artificial, if you present work from artificial intelligence as your own, that is exactly like presenting someone else's work as your own. It's against academic integrity and it would penalize the same way. <clears throat> Just to point out to you, almost every assignment you do in this class requires you to apply what you learn to a real setting or do some critical thinking and application about what you learned in the class. Artificial intelligence cannot write those answers. Artificial intelligence can do some things, usually 50% of what it writes is not correct, but it cannot tell you what your personal experience is in the class or how to apply what you learn to internship or a job or whatever. Um, I personally think for this class, if you need artificial intelligence to help you explain your experience in the class, then I would have to question if you should pass the class. So please keep that in mind. AI is not going to help you very much in this class. Uh, communication, I answer emails Monday through Fridays, uh, like 8 a.m. to 4 p.m., so if you have something critical on a Friday at 6 o'clock at night, I'm probably not going to see it till Monday. And that would be an example of when you would send me a text message asking me to check my email. It tells you how to send emails. These are some examples on this page of what is urgent and what is not urgent. Urgent is described very specifically, but if I'm sitting here doing work and my email is on, and you're texting me, that's problematic because my email is on while I'm sitting here. So please review what's urgent and what's not urgent. If you have questions about the class, it's best to try to check with two people in the class before you check with me. Um, if you need help, <clears throat> I have very clear guidelines on if you need help. First, if you miss class for an excused reason and it's documented, I will meet with you and hold a one-on-one -on -one session to catch you up. If you have an unexcused absence and you want to meet with me, and this would be beyond the two days you're allowed, I will not hold a one-on-one -on -one lesson if you're just missing class as a pattern of behavior. If you're in class and you come to me because you need help with something, the first thing I'm going to do is to ask you to see your notes. If you chose not to take notes and that's why you're confused, then you're on your own. I'm not going to hold a one-on-one -on -one session. But if you did take notes, the first thing I'm going to do is to look at your notes and try to see how we could improve your note taking so that you know what's going on better for the future, so that you have a skill that you can take to internship. If an internship supervisor tells you what to do and you choose not to take notes, that is not going to go over very well. So consider that as you're reading over this section. This explains uh, grading. We have very specific uh, grading tools or scoring rubrics. They're very specific so that you can actually get an A on every paper if you just follow the directions. Um, and it talks about lateness. One thing, and it, extensions are here, most of your 400 level teachers will grant you extensions, but the requirement is that you ask for the extension two or more days in advance. If a project is due on Saturday, you really know by Thursday if you're going to get it done. The extensions for me, and I know for some of your other professors, we don't really care why. It doesn't matter to us. For example, you could misjudge your time on how much time you were going to need that week. <clears throat> or you could be called in to work. We don't, I don't really care why. Um, if you need an extension, you need to send me an email telling me um, I need an extension. Uh, a brief reason why 
and then please tell me the day you want to turn it in because um, I give you that option if you have an extension I give you option first to tell me when it's due um, and then I respond to what you recommend so that's really important uh, it tells you how to save your documents um, if you think your grade is wrong this is very important if you think your grade is wrong it is possible I make a mistake it tells you how to do what to have what to do if you think I'm wrong you have one week to do it so you can't wait till the end of the semester and then ask me to go back and read all your papers because you need five points so pay attention to this um, I don't usually make mistakes because before you get a grade on your paper I read it twice so your paper is read twice before it's graded and for that reason I don't normally miss things but it is possible that I miss something so just keep that strategy in mind if you want to A or B in the class what's really important is that you have to be able to apply think critically synthesize and evaluate what we're doing in class if you can repeat facts with 100 percent accuracy the highest grade you can get is a C you can only get an A or a B if you are able to think critically and synthesize, analyze, and evaluate. There are two extra credit assignments. The one is LinkedIn. Uh, that is worth 10 points. There is a career fair or a similar event that happens every semester that involves interns, and that also can be an extra credit assignment. Um, I don't give it individual extra credit assignments. They're either available for the whole class or they're not given. This shows you grades. I just want to show something. A lot of people freak out about this class because the class, you would do group work the entire time. From the first day until the very end of the semester, you're working in a group. And that freaks people out. However, I want you to look at the point structure. Even though you're working in a group all semester to create an event, only 5% of your grade is related to the assignments that you turn in as a group. So if you have somebody in your group goofing off and, it, and it's hurting your assignment grades, at the most it's going to impact you at 5% and you'd have to get a zero on everything for that to happen. So please don't freak out about the group work and your grade because it has a very little impact on your grade. The small assignments which are listed here are worth 31% of your grade and your large papers are worth 64% of your grade. So keep that in mind as we're going through this semester. Assignments, um, this describes all of the assignments. This is very important, something that I added this semester, and this has to do with AI, because if this happens, I'm pretty sure you used artificial intelligence. If you do not follow the directions, it's highly likely I'm not going to grade your paper, because it's just, it's too much. It's, it's crazy when people don't follow the directions. And the other thing that's critical is if you answer a question that I did not ask you, you're probably going to receive a zero on the assignment. Um, if you don't take the time to carefully answer the question that I ask, then I will not grade your work. It's very simple. Um, so, for example, last semester, one of the questions was, tell me three items that happened in your group that could have been prevented and how they could have been prevented. At least five people used AI and submitted a description of what an effective team is. That's not what I asked. That's clearly the use of AI. As I said in the beginning, AI cannot answer the questions that I ask you because I'm asking you to apply. And AI cannot do that for you. And it should be relatively easy for you to apply what's happening in the class because you are there experiencing it. There are descriptions of all your assignments here and what they are going through everything how the grading works is here student services and then you have a course outline and at the very end you have a calendar um, I'm currently in the process of fixing the calendar to make sure it matches the outline um, but that's it that's 32 pages of a syllabus if you have questions, please make sure you ask. Do not stay in the dark if you have a question. Hopefully this is helpful to you. The whole purpose is that it helps you be successful in the class. I look forward to seeing you the first day.